just going live on all the channels. Okay. We are live on TikTok, YouTube, Kick, and Twitch. Where are you? There you are. So many chats. There is no way I'm gonna keep up with all of these. There is zero way. Good morning, hello everyone. Serenity, uh, what time is the game? Maybe, text me about it. I don't know, cause I've got a class for the kiddo. But I wanna go, weren't you, wasn't, was it the Friday game you were supposed to remind me about? I thought it was a Saturday game. Saturday I can do for sure. Today, maybe not so much. 6.30 tonight? Okay. That I could probably do. Okay. <laughs> I think all the channels are on. All the channels are open. I'm gonna find myself a comfy seat. Can you guys hear me okay? I can barely see the chat, FYI, so. But that's okay because we're not here to chat. The whole time. Just after, just after. <sighs> so for those of you who are new here, hello, hello. My name is Reverend Deborah, and I do not go live with people I do not know, but if you would like to go live another time, feel free to um, send me a message about going live. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, why don't we just do this, guys? There. Now I can't see the chat at all. So you can chat, you can troll, you can do whatever you feel like doing, or you can offer yourself a little bit of self-care and find yourself a comfortable place to put your butt and do some tiny yoga with me. So again, hello, I'm Reverend Deborah. I am a movement facilitator, movement in breath, movement in body, movement in whole being. And this is our tiny yoga class, tiny yoga, like just tiny movements. Not really. Um, yes and no. I have lived in many small spaces, tiny homes, RVs, um, closets. I actually had a room that was a closet once. Yes. Um, we don't always have the space for a full length mat practice. And I used to let that get in the way of getting into my body. As I traveled down the path of meditation, the funny thing is, is I found in there an expansiveness within myself that I realized was always available to me, no matter what size of the actual physical space I was in. And it also translated even deeper for those mornings where I wake up with limited mobility, where I may wake up feeling stuck, rigid, having to roll myself, flop myself out of bed just to get out of bed, right? Having to lay there for a few moments, trying to readjust, get my hips back in place. Um, so that is where tiny yoga, hey Cha, tiny yoga was born out of this need as well as this realization that it doesn't take a lot of movement for us to get into the expansiveness within us, for us to experience the expansiveness within us. So if you have a spot to plop your butt, please go, go ahead and do so and join me for this class. It's a 30 minute give or take um, gentle flow for everybody and every space. You can use a chair, you can use the edge of a, a bench, you can use the edge of your bed. 
Um, you can use your RV dinette. You can use the front seat of your car, although I always recommend if you are using your car, it might be helpful for you to open the door and swing out so you have a little bit more leg room. Let me think. With what we're doing today, actually, you don't need a ton of leg room. You don't need a ton of leg room. Um, so our theme this week has been cultivating stability. And in all of our classes this week, we have worked with mindfulness tools and concepts that are in that vein of cultivating a sense of inner stability, right? We think of stability sometimes in just our body, but there is so much more underneath. If we are turbulent within, it's going to be hard to get our bodies to be stable and still. So we're going to combine the mindfulness tools from this week. In the we're going to go through a couple of modified chair poses to get into the body to warm up the muscles and we're going to use the mudra and we're going to actually apply the mudra in real time so we're going to get into the body we're going to warm up the muscles we're going to stretch out a little bit and then we're going to sit with the mudra for just five minutes remember you sit with the mudra for a minimum of five minutes to really feel to begin to feel the effects so we're going to use this mudra which is the mudra for stability for five minutes and then we're going to do our peak pose and what i want you to do is i want you to notice the difference between we're going to do the peak pose first sit with the mudra and then do the peak pose again this mudra is intended to cultivate stability bring more stability to your overall being so we're going to put it to the test so come join me again find yourself a comfortable place to put your bottom take your last sip of coffee or tea for a hot minute and I think I need my phone out so I can see what time it is hold on yes sir -y. all right so come to the edge of your seat and bring both your feet to the floor flat on the floor it's okay if you have shoes on or if you're barefoot either way is fine if you have the space for it, bring your knees to a 90 degree angle and your feet about shoulder width apart. Turn down that music so I don't feel like I'm yelling over it. And we are gonna simply rest, go ahead and rest your hands in your lap. And we will begin as we always do with three deep breaths to fully arrive here for our practice. Go ahead and close your eyes and inhale the breath through the nose, pulling it through the lungs and all the way into the belly. And sigh it out. Inhale again, lifting the heart and elongating the spine, allowing the inhale to lift your heart and exhale, releasing. Inhale once more, expanding the ribcage in all directions, front, sides, and back, and hold at the top. Taking a little more air, a little more, a little more. Hold, and exhale. Now you can leave your eyes closed for as long as you feel comfortable doing so. We're just going to slowly move down the body, warming up the muscles. Please try not to get too deep. We're not trying to pop our neck or make anything snap, crackle, or pop. We're just warming the muscles, just bringing awareness into the muscles. So go ahead and begin by inhaling and tilting your chin up towards the ceiling and exhaling the chin back down to the chest. Just warming up the muscles. Back and forth, up and down. Inhaling the chin up, exhaling the chin down. A couple more. Take your time. And bring the head back to neutral. And then remaining relaxed in the shoulders, gently tilt the ear towards the shoulder, towards one shoulder, and then the other ear towards the other shoulder. So just tilting the head side to side, ear to shoulder, but leaving the shoulders relaxed. 
Continuing to breathe. Always check that you're not holding your breath. And again, we're not going too deep here, just warming into the muscles, kind of feeling that stretch, not just in the side of your neck, but maybe down into your back a little bit, up into your shoulder, but not so far that we create tension. And back to neutral. Go ahead and drop the chin and do a couple of rotations all the way around, a couple times in one direction. Remember, we're not going for the neck pops here. We're just warming into the muscles. I have neck and shoulder conditions that make this particular exercise a little bit treacherous. Okay, switch directions. If I go too deep, I cause myself pain for the rest of the day. So take your time without overextending, just feeling into, warming into, being aware of the muscles. And back to neutral once you come all the way around. And then we will rotate the shoulders. Go ahead and begin just one direction, either forward or back, making sure to get a full rotation. So if you're going backwards, you wanna drop your shoulders down a little bit, push them forward ever so slightly, bring them up, keeping the neck long. We're not trying to crunch the shoulders into the neck or into the ears, right? We bring them up and back and let them melt down the back, right? couple of times this direction trying to leave try to leave your elbows hanging it's just your shoulders and switch directions just the shoulders and back to neutral we're going to do a slight twist. We usually get a little deeper into the twist. Today we're going to just do a slight twist. So inhale, full breath. And as you exhale, take, let's start with your right hand. Right hand to left knee and gently slide the left hand back as you turn into a twist. You can rest that left hand on the chair or the bed behind you. You can leave it on your, you can put it on your low back to assist in the twist. Whatever works for you, get a gentle twist here. Look over your back shoulder, gently, slightly. Keep breathing. Big inhale. And exhale, slowly releasing back to center. Other side. Inhale. Reaching your left hand to your right knee. Exhale as you gently twist. I really like the back hand on the low back. It helps me stay aware of the alignment of my low back, tailbone, hips while I'm doing this twist. Look over that back shoulder. Breathe, slow and steady. Big deep breath in and exhale gently back to center. We're going to move into a couple of cat cows. So place your palms down on your thighs or on your knees, whichever feels most appropriate to you. You can even move your hands through the cat cows along your knees. This is my preferred way to do it. So inhale. Sending the chest forward, lifting the chin, allowing the shoulders to roll back ever so slightly. Heart lifting up towards the sky, chin lifting gently up towards the sky, arching the back forward. And exhale, curving the spine, dropping the chin. You can even push the hands forward a little bit to get that nice rounded back all the way down to the lower back. Inhale forward, chest forward, chin up. Exhale, round the back, chin down. Let's do a couple more rotations here. Go at your own pace. Being very intentional about your movement. This is not a like, we're not trying to do some funky dance moves, right? The funky chicken. Take your time. Be present, inhaling, chin up, chest forward. 
Exhale, rounding the back, dropping the chin. Feel the entire length of your spine moving with this motion. Do one more big inhale, chin up, chest forward, a little bit of an extra arch. And exhale, rounding the spine, curving forward. Stay here and return to a natural rhythm of breath as you slowly tiptoe yourself, tiptoe your fingers, lean forward all the way into a forward fold. You can leave your knees beneath your chest and rest your chest on your knees, or you can tiptoe your feet open and drop your chest between your knees, whatever is most available and comfortable for you. So go ahead and get into that forward fold. I do like to drop my chest between my knees and allow your head and arms to hang in a forward fold. Keep breathing in your forward fold. Breathing into the full length of your back. Inhale into the entire back body. And exhale, allowing the head and shoulders to hang. Slowly roll up on the inhale. And come back to neutral. Pause here for just a second. Sometimes it can give you a little lightheadedness, so pause and let that sensation pass. Let the sensations that have built up in your body from that movement, let them settle. Now go ahead and inch yourself over to the side of your seat, right to the edge. You can even bring one butt cheek off to the side, okay? We're gonna do a modified tiger pose here. So with your outside leg, slide your foot back and point your toes to rest the top of your foot on the floor. See if you can get your knee to be straight down, not touching. We don't wanna be touching the floor here unless your chair is that low, then you're in that position. But preferably you have some space to allow your leg to hang here. Inhale that same arm. So I've got my left side down and my left arm up. Gaze up towards the ceiling and create some space in that entire side body. For me, again, that's the left side body. Use your right leg and your torso to keep the rest of your body upright without creating tension. Exhale. Release. Inch yourself over to the other side, scoot your butt. Inch your toes all the way to the other side. Same thing, slide your right leg back now, pointing your toe, resting your top of your right foot on the floor, allowing that right leg to hang. You can't really see there, there we go. I've got space between my knee and the floor. Ideally, you want your right leg to hang. And then you inhale that right arm up, reaching towards the sky. Gazing up towards the ceiling, creating space in that entire right side of the body through the hip from the tips of the fingers to the tip of the knee. Does the knee have a tip? To the kneecap. Breathe. And exhale as you release. Back to center in your chair. Come again to the edge of your seat. Again, it can be, a, well, we, we already started there, okay. Bring your feet flat to the ground again. Knees at a 90 degree angle. Just wiggle your toes, wiggle your feet for a second. Ground yourself out again. Pause here. And take both hands interlace your fingers under your right thigh inhale as you lift your thigh up to your chest 
and exhale, dropping the forehead to the knee, rounding the spine, inhale back up, and exhale, releasing the leg, the right leg. Interlace your fingers underneath your left thigh this time. Inhale, lifting your left thigh all the way up to your chest. And exhale, bringing forehead to knee, rounding the back. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, release the leg. Now we're gonna activate our core here. So if you have the space for it, then I invite you to join us for a half boat pose. Be mindful here of the kind of chair you're in, the kind of seat you're in. If this is not available to you without holding on, then please just go ahead and hold on, right? We're gonna go ahead and put our hands in this position here first, or eventually, but Honor where you are in the moment. Honor what your situation is in the moment. If you can't quite get this pose, find a modification that works for you or just get as close as you can. So we're gonna inhale both knees up. It's okay if you do it separately or both at the same time. Inhale, bringing your knees up, leaning, leaning backward. You can interlace your fingers in front of your knees here and just pause right here, pointing your toes, Activate your core so we're not using our back muscles to hold us here. We're using our abdomen, lower abdomen, even side body, the muscles on the side here. A little bit into the thighs, sending the intention through the toes, pointing the toes, interlacing your fingers in front of your knees here, and find a steady rhythm of breath just resting in this position. You can stay here. If you would like to move into half boat, go ahead and extend the four legs the, from beneath the knees. Now you can stay here, either with your hands on your thighs. I would highly suggest though, keeping your hands off or at least just touching your thighs. Don't hold your thighs up. We are working here on activating the core. You can reach your hands out if it's available to you. Make sure you're keeping your chin up so you're not collapsing your chin towards your chest. Take a couple more breaths here. Inhale. Go ahead and hinge at the knees bringing the toes down interlacing the fingers back in front of the knees and return to this what is this it's not even a boat it's a skiff right raft pose we're going to call this raft pose <laughs> take a deep breath in and gently release the legs down okay and we're going to move in to R. After activating our core, we're going to move into our balance pose. So we're going to do a modified version of eagle pose. We're going to get into the eagle pose one time on each side. And then we're going to sit down for five minutes with our mudra for the week, the mudra for stability. And then we're going to get back into eagle pose one time on each side. And I want you to feel into the difference of how this mudra cultivates stability. So for modified eagle, we're not going to do eagle arms. We're just going to do eagle legs. So lift your right leg over your left and then tuck your right toes behind your right left leg. Okay. So you get a little bit of a twist like this as best you can. If you can't get all the way tucked in there, just keep the foot tucked close to the outside of the ankle. Again, it's not about perfection. It's about practice. It's about presence. It's about the process. So be present with your process, your practice, where you are in the moment, okay? So again, that's right leg over left, and tuck your right foot back behind your left leg as much as you can, or keep it tucked to the outside of the left leg. Bring the hands together into prayer, and tuck your foot, pull your foot back towards the chair. This is gonna help you hinge up into this modified eagle. If your feet are too far out, you're gonna have to like pull, pull yourself up. 
And we don't want to do that. That's too, too much tension in the muscles. So bring that left foot back, right foot over top, right leg over top, right foot curled behind the leg, hands together in prayer. Anchor your prayer hands to your sternum. This is going to help you get up a little bit. Lean forward into that left foot and lift ever so slightly off the chair. Align the spine, elongating the spine, keeping strength in that left leg, finding your balance, finding your stability, grounding into the left leg, feeling pressure in every inch, in every ounce of the left foot, bottom of the left foot. Keep breathing. Take a deep breath in and gently, slowly release back down to the chair. Please try not to plop back into the chair. Release the arms, release the legs, shake it out. And we're gonna do the other side. Okay, modified eagle on the other side. Left leg over the right, crossing over the right. Tuck your left foot behind the right or in to the outside of the ankle. Bring your palms together, anchor them to your sternum. This is going to keep everything in line, everything pulled together. We wanna to keep that energy within to support our overall stability. So anchor your prayer hands here to your sternum. Tuck that left leg, that left leg, that left foot being tucked back here is gonna help you get up as well. Tiptoe, scoot your right foot back towards your chair so that you can simply lift off the edge of your chair. It's okay if this takes a couple tries. If you're like, oh shit, no, oh, what, uh, uh, that's okay. But when you do so, please do so with intention, with awareness, with gentleness. Inhale. Exhale. And go ahead and inhale up into Modified Eagle. Find your stability, find your grounding, feel into the entire right foot, the bottom of the right foot, the entire right foot. Elongate the spine, feel the grounding coming up through your right foot, all the way up through your right leg, into your hips, up through your back, into your entire body, out the top of your head. Take a couple of breaths here. Last inhale, big deep inhale and gently release as you exhale, coming back down to your seat. It's that back down that's difficult, especially when you take it intentionally. Go ahead and release the legs, shake it out. Okay, now we're gonna sit for five minutes with the Gata Mudra. The Gata Mudra is the mudra for stability, the Gata Mudra works on your pelvic area, clearing out blockages. It works on the spine. It works on the tailbone. It strengthens your connection down to the earth and pulling that energy upward into the body. So imagine that kind of the energy that your roots would be pulling up to. It always reminds me of a tree. This one reminds me of a tree. So this is how we do the mudra. I'm going to come a little closer because this mudra is a little bit twisted. So, so um, there's two ways to get into this mudra. Okay. Make sure my way off camera here, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. Two ways to get into this mudra. Ooh. First, palms facing out, cross your thumbs and then bring the tip of your finger to touch the tip of your thumb on, but with both hands. So it creates these interlocking circles here. Then bring your middle fingers to touch as they're extended, keep them extended, bring them to touch. Go ahead and let your interlocking circles kind of cross over and tuck in. And then those last two fingers, your ring and your pinky get folded in just like you're crossing your, just like you're, you know, clasping your hands. Bring them down to tuck into your palms. So this is one way to get into the Gata Mudra. The other way is just the opposite. Begin with your palms facing towards you, cross your pinkies, tuck them into each other, hook them into each other, and then hook your ring fingers into each other, okay? Now clasp your hands over that, keeping your middle fingers extended, 
touching the pads of your middle fingers together and then create those interlocking circles with your pointer and your thumb. This is the Gata Mudra, again. So two ways to get into the Gata Mudra, interlocking circles with your pointer and your thumb, middle finger pads touching extended, and ring and pinky tucked into your palm. If you find another way to get into this mudra that works better for you, please, please, please make me a video and show me because I love to have all the different variations and all the different ways to help everybody get into their mudra. So this is the Gata Mudra. And we're gonna sit with the Gata Mudra for just five minutes. You don't have to do anything else in these five minutes, but sit with this mudra. So you can either sit with the mudra with your feet planted on the ground knees at a 90 degree angle, or you can sit with this mudra by bringing the bottoms of your feet together and allowing your knees to fall open. This can be a nice little resting position. If this is too intense for you, if it doesn't work for you, then please just go ahead and sit like this. We hold our Gata Mudra down towards the pelvis and ideally point it up ever so slightly. It can be difficult on the wrists to get into this position and on the elbows. So if this doesn't work for you, go ahead and move it out a little bit or move it up a little bit, right? Honor where you are in the moment. For me, yeah, that is a little bit higher than my pelvis. Ideally, you want this below the belly button, okay? But if you can't get it there, honor where you are in the moment. And we will go ahead and sit for our five minutes. Let me check the clock. I am gonna sit in the modified reclining bound angle to give my hips a little bit of an opening relaxation. There we go, all right. Holding your Gata Mudra, close your eyes and just follow the breath. Go ahead and allow everything else to fall away. Let the breath lull you into the present moment. Anytime thoughts or sensations or distractions pop up and pull your attention away, bring your attention back. As soon as you've noticed that your attention has gone somewhere else, just bring it back to whatever your focal point is. If the breath works for you, just follow the breath. Inhale and exhale, closing your eyes, just being present with this mudra. If the breath is not enough, to keep your mind monkeys from chattering too much, then add another anchor. You can focus on the point where your middle fingers touch, or you could focus on the points where your finger, your pointer finger and your thumb touch. You could focus on the space inside of this mudra. You could focus on the tip of your nose. You can find a mantra that just says, I am present. I am experiencing this mudra. You can simply say to yourself, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. It does not matter what you use as an anchor, as long as that anchor is gentle and compassionate for your current state of being. Offer yourself gentleness, patience, and love as you sit for five minutes cultivating stability Slow, steady breaths, following the inhale all the way to the top, and the exhale all the way to the bottom. your mind monkeys are busy, offer them a gentle smile, offer them some compassion and love. Yes, mind monkeys, I know it's Friday, but we're not done yet. We are present with our practice. And right now our practice is, shh, quiet mind monkeys. Gentle, loving, compassion for self. 
Check in with your mudra. Make sure you tilt those middle fingers up towards the sky as much as you can without creating too much tension in the wrists or the elbows. We're just going to sit for five minutes. We're already three minutes in. Keep breathing. Allowing everything else to fall away. Inhaling the present moment and exhaling any tension in the breath, in the body, or the being. Slow, steady breaths, inhaling all the way to the top, exhaling all the way to the bottom. This practice is much like a pendulum. We're just bringing the pendulum back to center. Every time it gets knocked out of center, we bring it back. In doing so, we cultivate stillness within. That stillness offers us its own kind of stability. Because if your foundation is constantly moving, it's not very stable. with the breath, slow, steady inhales, allowing the breath to anchor you into the present moment and letting everything else fall away. Check in with your mudra, tilt it back up again, release any tension in the body. Go ahead and take a big deep breath in and exhale gently releasing the mudra bringing your feet flat back to the ground your bottom of your feet back to the ground if you had your feet open back to that 90 degree angle gently open your eyes if you have not already and i invite you to take a moment to feel into your feet anchor your feet again into the ground Pressing your big toes of both feet into the ground. Pressing the second toe of both feet into the ground. Pressing the third toe of both feet into the ground. Pressing the pinky toe of both feet into the ground. Pressing into the sides of both feet. Pressing into the heel without lifting the toes. Pressing into the heel of both feet. Around the inside of both feet. Pressing into the bridge of both feet. Pressing up towards the ball and across the ball of both feet. And now pressing into the entire bottom of both feet. The entire bottom of both feet. Sir, that is not the place where you can be where I'm going to cross my legs. All right. So we're going to move into eagle pose again. And we're going to see how much stability that mudra helped us cultivate. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to disturb puppy here. I wanna offer a, a modification as well. If eagle pose is not available to you, if crossing the legs and doing this stuff, if just, this just is not available to you, then please modify. And the easiest modification is chair pose, which means you just keep both feet flat on the ground. Honor where you are in the moment. This isn't a competition. This isn't a challenge. This is an invitation for you to find where you need to be right now. So chair pose, if that's what's available to you, or eagle pose again, if you would like to do that with me. 
Find the edge of your seat without sliding off, okay? Don't fall on the floor. <laughs> Bring your right foot to cross over your left. Point your right toe and tuck it behind your left foot, behind your left uh, calf, or on the outside of your left ankle. Find what works for you. I like a good deep tuck partially because it helps me maintain more stability. Keeping my legs nice and tucked, keeping that foot tucked around my left ankle really helps to cultivate more stability. So again, we're not doing eagle arms here, we're just doing eagle legs. I'm sorry, puppy, I'm so sorry. Okay, bring your eagle legs in towards your chair. It's gonna help you just kind of hinge up out of the chair, okay? Bring the hands to prayer position at the sternum anchor them into the sternum. Now again, if this is not available to you and it works better to put your hands on your hips, please do that. If it works better to lift yourself off your chair and then you get back into this position, great, do that. Modify for what you need. I can't say it enough, okay? Eagle legs, right leg over left, tuck that right foot behind the left, palms to the chest, anchor them at your sternum, and on the inhale, lift off your chair, elongating the spine. Find the stability in your left foot. Anchor that left foot all the way into the ground. Wiggle a little if you need to, to find your center. Elongate the spine, creating space between your tailbone and the top of your head. Long spine, deep breaths. Find a focal point if that helps. Keep breathing. Release whenever you're ready or continue to hold if you've got it. Take a big deep breath in and gently, slowly release towards the chair. That was not quite slowly. <laughs> Go ahead and release the right leg from the left, putting both feet on the ground disturbing your puppy if you must okay i'll switch there you go you can use that one as a pillow now okay we're gonna go to the other side bring your bottom to the edge of your seat bring your left leg to cross over your right tuck your left foot behind your left right ankle behind your calf on the outside of your right foot wherever is available to you. Again, if eagle legs is not available to you, go ahead and just do chair pose. Tuck them if you got them. Bring your palms together at your sternum. Anchor your palms, anchor your thumbs to your sternum. Take a big deep breath in. And exhale. And on the next inhale, lift out of the chair. Finding your center, finding stability in that right foot. Plant that right foot, all the right foot, the entire right foot, toes even, all of it activated, keeping your grounding, your center stable. Elongate the spine, creating space between the tailbone, reaching the tailbone back and down, reaching the crown of the head up towards the sky. Find your focal point, stay steady. Take a big deep breath in and slowly, gently release back to your chair. Release your hands, release your legs. Off your knees, some windshield wipers here. Then bring the bottoms of your feet to touch. So turn the bottoms of your feet towards each other, opening the knees. Again, if this is available to you, then go ahead and do this. It's going to help a lot to open. We just kind of curled everything together, yeah? So let's do the opposite. Open up the knees, open up the hips. Rest your hands, the back of your hands, on the inside of your thighs. And just take a moment here to rest. We're not doing anything else. Just breathe. Allow your breath to settle. Keep the spine elongated. You can close your eyes here if you'd like to. You can lean back in your chair if you'd like to. Try not to curve your spine. Try not to slouch too much, which is why I like to remain upright. 
activating my core and just leaning back a little bit. That's my ideal. But find what works for you. You are not me, I am not you, but I am you and you are me. But you need the different version, right? You are the different version of me and vice versa. We so often forget that we are human beings and try to act, try to run around like human doings. Moving from this thing, this thing, to this thing, to this thing. Doing and doing and doing and doing. And we forget how important the being is between all of the doing. When we don't give ourselves time to rest, to integrate, to settle, we carry the things from the previous <laughs> into the present. A lot of times this is how these like really old memories, really old things become integrated into the body, become stuck and compartmentalized in the body because we don't, did not in the moment give them time to process, to come up and to be released. Now, I don't say that to chide you. I don't say that to guilt you. I don't say that to create any kind of shame or that kind of stuff within you. Instead, I say it as a, to cultivate the awareness, to cultivate the awareness of how often we skip the being part, to cultivate more space allow it to allow ourselves to simply be present with our body with our emotions with our experience with our words with other people with the absolutely gorgeous buttercups that are outside right now like <laughs> presence is a powerful powerful thing you can stay here as long as you would like in your practice. When you feel complete, go ahead and slowly bring your knees together. You can use your hands to assist, bringing the feet back to the floor. Go ahead and scoot back in your chair a little bit. Anchoring your bottom to your chair, anchoring your feet to the ground. Offer yourself some little, a couple of hip, hip tilts here. We've done some tilting of the hip forward and backward and activating of the muscles in the abdomen and through the legs and the hips. So just offer yourself a little bit of like lift your right butt cheek, lift your left butt cheek, lift your right, lift your left. Like you're releasing a fart. There you go. There you go. <laughs> My kid's over there snickering, doing like this <laughs> in his chair. <laughs> okay. Ah. <sighs> Let's do three big, deep inhales and exhales, audible exhales. Inhale, and ah, two more. Ah, last one. Ah. For just a moment, close your eyes. And bring your hands either into prayer or simply lay one over the other over your heart in gratitude for today's practice. In gratitude for this space, this shared space where we can grow and learn together. Offer yourself some gratitude for taking the time for self-care today. You were so fucking worth it. And that whole thing about not having enough time to practice, not having enough time, to, enough time for self-care. Well, look at you. Look at you. Proving yourself worthy of self-care. And thank you so much for joining me. I love sharing these things with you guys. When you are ready to come back to reality, to leave your practice, please do so slowly. Offer yourself some wiggles. Offer yourself some stretches. Gently open your eyes only when you're ready. It's funny to me that a lot of times I will go through a yoga practice, I will go through a flow, and then afterwards find that I almost need some stretch, like, like a wake-up stretch 
right? <laughs> not that my body's not awake, not that my mind is not awake, but it's as if I have been somewhere else. I have been in a different experience. And then I go, okay, now we're coming out of practice time and back to reality. Right? Apparently the big bear stretches are my go-to transition between realities. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who are just hanging out and missed the beginning of the practice or want the entire practice to watch again, remember my replays are always on YouTube. I'm at Move With Change on YouTube. I'm at Move With Change on like all the platforms. I even opened a Clapper account. <laughs> so I'm there too. Hey, Dream Baby, you're welcome. You're welcome, Robert. Um, so if you guys could please do me a favor and follow me over on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. I go live over on YouTube and all of my replays are on YouTube. Um, and if the other social media stuff starts shutting me down, there will hopefully always be stuff on YouTube. But YouTube hides my stuff too. That's okay. That's why we created the Discord, right? We've got a Discord. If you want to join the Discord, you can join the Discord for free. Why join the Discord for free? So that we can chat directly. So you can ask questions directly. So you can ask for mudras or modifications directly so that I can share with you some Ayurvedic recipes that I really, really love. So I can share with you more information about the mudras each week. So I can share with you my social feed so you don't have to fight the algorithm on all these that seems to be hiding my stuff from you guys. Um, we also have a 24 seven dance hall in the discord we also have a space we call the kea cocoon which is a safe space if you need a body double if you need somebody to just sit with you for a little bit it's not a counseling space we have group coaching for that in the sangha which requires membership but we do have the kea cocoon which is more of just a hey i need somebody to be with me space um gosh what else do we have over there i've got a podcast move with change podcast that is available on spotify the link for that podcast is on my Patreon. It's also in the Discord and you get updated in the Discord about every single time I post a new meditation or astro astrology stuff or anything like that. Um, my Patreon is patreon.com at move with change. Um, you can, if you are enjoying these free live classes, I do very much appreciate any gratitude pop topped in the, dropped in the tip jar. Um, I am a single mom and this is my business and I love doing this, but we got to make a living somehow. And I really like being able to give things away without having to, I don't know, charge a ticket at the door. Like there's a thing, there's a whole thing with that. But regardless, there's a tip jar on Patreon. If you enjoy these, I am very grateful for any gratitude you can offer. If you would like to dive deeper into these practices and learn more about mindfulness and how to integrate mindfulness into your everyday life, um, then I highly suggest joining a membership. We have various membership levels into our Sangha. A Sangha is just a community of people practicing mindfulness. It's not, we don't come from any particular religious angle. Um, I am a non-denominational reverend, so I'm familiar and have studied multiple, um, a bunch of different religions. However, we, I guess the gift that I received from all of that study and all of that work was to find the common threads in all of those different belief systems. And that's what we focus on, are the common threads, the common threads of divinity, the common threads of authenticity, the common threads of compassion and patience and love. You know, the stuff the universe is made out of. So if you are on this journey of rediscovering yourself, of coming home to yourself, of deprogramming yourself, of deconstructing your thought process, your life, your belief system. If you're waking up from astral projection dreams and suddenly hearing voices and seeing colors you didn't before, if you're dealing with ascension, ascension symptoms, as a lot of us are, the Sangha is a really good place to be. I did a lot of this work on my own for many, many years without the ability to talk to anybody about it. 
It was as if the universe put me behind a glass wall and that's where I had to operate from. So I know what it's like to do the work by yourself and to feel crazy and to feel like an outcast and to feel like you can't find home or tribe because every single time you try to talk to somebody about energy that you feel moving through your body or about the intuition you received and the way that you just didn't, you chose not to do it because I just felt it. It wasn't right, right? When you are moving into this stage of your existence, it's important. It really is important to surround yourself with people who see you and see value in you on your process no matter where you're at it's important to keep the relationships that are important to us yes by no means am i saying go drop everybody you know and go find a whole new people that's not authentic mm, refreshing i love that so that's one of those things that you know when i was going through these things learning about meditation so refreshing says i've saw i've seen my my neurons expand during meditation electric blue those things those experiences are part of the waking up process and if you go out there into the world and you're like yeah i was seeing blue neuron connections neural connections in my meditation people are going to look at you fun and not, not not everybody but from personal experience right i've been an energy worker since i was a child so as a child i would go to the doctor and i would say to the doctor what is like when I feel this thing, when somebody yells in the house, it like creates like a, like a twinge here in my heart and I can feel it all the way down into my pinky finger. <laughs> and, and the doctor would go, uh, that's just your body. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. That's probably just in your head, right? They'd kind of dismiss it or you know, pat me on the head of like, oh, that's adorable. You're such a cute little kid. And I'm like, no, this is visceral and you don't have an explanation for it. It's easy to feel like you don't belong. It's easy to feel like you don't have anybody to talk to. But we know that in quantum physics terms, the simple, simple act of observing something changes it, right? I think this is something that's really important for us as humans that we aren't paying attention to very well, or we haven't before. We need to be seen. We need for us to thrive, for us to not get stuck. When an emotion comes up, when that sadness or fear or whatnot comes up, let's use fear. Fear comes up and if I'm on my own, fear can fester. Fear can dig in deeper. Fear can find the cracks in my armor and weasel its way in and become intricately a part of how I operate. But as soon as we have somebody there with us and that fear crops up, have you ever done this? Like a fear you've been holding on to for years and years and years and you finally speak it to somebody and just in the fact that they were here and observing it and listening with you, suddenly it loses weight. And you're like, oh, weird. I mean, I was totally afraid of that before, but now that I say it out loud with you here, I, it feels like it's not so scary. I don't know why I was afraid anymore. We have mirror neurons in our brain that store your experiences and my experiences the same in my brain. We are drops in the same ocean of a collective consciousness. I do create more peace in the world when I am more peaceful. If you would like to explore that kind of dynamic, that kind of community, that kind of connection, approaching each other with curiosity and willingness, recognizing the intrinsic value, the, the profound value in holding compassionate space for each other, then please come join us on the Discord. Again, you can get into the Discord completely for free, and then there's levels of membership for however deep you want to get into the Sangha or however deep is available to you at the time, right? And I always also will always say, guys, my prices probably will always be flexible. And that's not because I don't value myself. That is because I value you too. And I value you and me more than I value that little paper cloth thing that has a really 
flighty value. That's the only word I can think of. Anyway, there is far more value in this work and in this practice and in these tools than there is in me charging an exorbitant amount for anybody to get in the gate. That's not what this is about. If I could, I would do it completely for free. When I was a little girl, I used to read stories about Christ and I felt compelled. I wanted to just, it's probably how I became a heathen, right? I wanted to just walk the earth barefoot and hold space for people and be with people and share the tools and the insights that have helped me along the way, that have supported me along the way. I just wanna walk beside you. I just wanna walk beside you on the beach for a bit, right? I've learned that it's not my job to carry you. That's, that's God, that's divinity, right? That's the higher power, that's source. I am not strong enough to carry you, but together we are strong enough to carry each other. And we can only do that by holding space for each other and being present with each other. And not by me saying, here, I'll take your burden. But by me saying, I see you carrying your burden and I'm here to stand beside you. And to remind you that it's okay to put it down if you need to. If your shoulders are tired, put it down for a minute and let's just sit here in the sand and watch the waves. So the link for the Discord is on my Patreon. Um, it might even be on YouTube. The link for Patreon is on my bio in most places. So join the Discord. YouTube? I said YouTube, didn't I? There's too many names. YouTube, Twitch, Kick, t TikTok, Clapper, Patreon, Discord. Spreading myself out to all the places. But all of those social media places are just the window into the Sangha. That's where most of the good stuff happens. Glitter Bee, hey, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. People think you're so woo-woo when you speak of anything that isn't mainstream. That is totally one of those things. Like I grew up, so I, you know, I, I tell, I tell you guys about how I grew up doing energy work, and um, I, my mother was a great gift to me in that regard. That she taught me a lot, but she also taught me very directly. She goes, "Do not tell them what you know. Do not talk to them about this stuff, because if you do, they will take it away." They will put you away. They will tell you you're crazy. They will, she's like, never, never, never let them know. And a lot of that for her was from out of, was out of fear. And out of, you know, being in the generation she was as a boomer, like it was dangerous to talk about those things. And it still sometimes is. Because the truth is, becoming authentically you Coming home to yourself and standing truly in your power, that's real freedom. That's real autonomy. <laughs> Thanks, Glitterby. You know, we so often get this idea because we live in this finite world and we think of how we get our needs met is by finite things, right? I'm hungry, so I eat food, which is a finite experience in my digestion. Yes, TikTok, we're still alive and still real. It's waiting to verify me or to drop. Detected inactivity and they're not letting me do anything about it. All right, well, if TikTok, if you guys drop and I can't fix it, then I'm here on Kick, Twitch, YouTube, and all the other places. TikTok does not like to share this stuff. What did I say? TikTok does not like to share it. It's that powerful. No internet connection, huh? Yeah, whatever. So... And it's just gonna end my life. Okay. This is why I'm on the Discord. This is why I'm on the Discord. 
because every time I come out and start sharing these things. Hello again. Yes, Corey, TikTok was wanting to verify me. There we go. Yeah, TikTok. Nope. Ugh. I am going to start, I think I'm going to start going live on Clapper because I'm over on Clapper and you can just go live on Clapper too. So um, you guys who are here on Kick, Twitch, and YouTube, you guys will always see me on here. Um, but I might end up dropping t TikTok because I'm really tired of fighting like that. You know, I wondered recently if it's my responsibility to alter the way that I share these things. Should I be playing the, you know, smoke and mirrors game? Should I be changing the way I say it? Should I be choosing my words more specifically? Should I be putting on a makeup tutorial while I'm telling you guys these things and maybe it'll work better? But after so many years of trying to be direct and having to beat around the bush to have these conversations with people, I'm over it. I'm completely over trying to manipulate the truth so that I can get it through narrow channels. It's time to just be authentic. It's time to just stand in your truth. That's where your real power is. All right, my friends, that was perfect timing anyway. I am going to go ahead and go uh, have some breakfast. And today is Friday, so we have maybe some dance party this evening in the Discord. Um, if you'd like to join the Discord, if you'd like to join the Sangha, if you would like to just get in free, the link is over on my Patreon again. Um, keep an eye out for my chakra workshop. I'm putting it out again this year. Every year I take my workshop in and I update it and I um, expand upon it. So hopefully I will have that done for a release in May. All of my workshops now are self-paced workshops. So you'll be able to do the workshop at your own pace in your own time without having to worry about class times. Um, I will make sure that there is space in our Sangha sessions to talk about, to build upon the workshops that I'm doing at the time. So um, if you'd like to get into any of those classes to our group coaching and things like that, got to find a membership on the Patreon or directly in the Discord. I love you guys so much. Uh, replays are always available on YouTube. Have a wonderful Friday. <laughs>